Hey guys, it's Bear. It's Thursday, July 9th, 2015, and uh, two days ago on Tuesday was four weeks since my top surgery, so I wanted to go ahead and give a four-week update. I did a two-week update, um, and things have changed significantly enough since then to go ahead and give you another update. Um, first and foremost, you know, the, the entire area has um, become less inflamed and less tender, less bruising. The bruising all around the incisions is, uh, is feeling a lot better. And you can see, you know, if you look at pictures, if you look at my last video, you can see that this area here is significantly less swollen. Um, there's been a little bit of flattening up here. Uh, there's still some swelling right around uh, the nipple and everything. But the swelling has gone down dramatically. The pain has gone down dramatically. Even though I was in minimal pain before, um, it's even less now. Uh, depending on my level of activity, you know, if I've been really active, if I've gone out a lot, you know, I'll be a little bit more sore in the evening and the next day. Um, the incisions are looking really, really good, you know, um, as far as the healing, the puffiness, you know, they're looking really healthy. The dog ear in my right side has gone down dramatically. It's still there a little bit. That incision goes back a lot farther than the left side. Um, so that'll get a little bit tender from time to time as I'm trying to walk more normally and get my arms down, get my shoulders back. Um, but as far as pain, it's, it's dramatically decreased. The uh, nipple areas, the nipples and areolas are looking really good. This one has just a little bit uh, of scabbing left. The, the major scab fell off actually earlier today. So it's a little bit red right there where the scab was. Um, and it has some sutures still kind of stuck around the area that I was told if you see those you can go ahead and tweeze them but I can't quite get a grip with the tweezers so um, I'll let the nurse do it on Tuesday. The right side has still just a little bit of scab that's stubbornly hanging on right here. Um, there's a suture right in there that is still not dissolved and still hasn't fallen out and the scab is kind of hanging on to it um, but the scabbing is dramatically different from what it was two weeks ago where the whole area was covered in scab. And the only area of concern is on this right side there's these two little white dots right here um, and what that is is very normal in the healing process. It's an abscess. If you look that up online it'll say it's a bacterial infection and that's true and that sounds really scary but it's actually really normal. Um, it probably means that there's a suture again in there that's stubbornly not dissolving and it's gotten a very mild infection. Uh, I called about it on Monday, and they said, you know, uh, put the bacitracin on it, you know, massage it, and keep an eye on it. If anything changes, give a call, but it's probably going to be fine. Um, so that's my actually, uh, you know, that's my update as far as actual healing goes. Uh, the other update I wanted to give you is the experience of just sort of having your body uh, be different, you know, um, and, and what that's been like. Um, I've had kind of a phantom, not limb, a phantom body part uh, experience and because that's a body part that caused me severe dysphoria, it's actually caused like a phantom dysphoria which is really fascinating. Um, you know, first and foremost, you don't realize until a body part is gone how much you compensate for it. So, you know, for instance, going ahead and putting your shoe on, you know, you bring your, your leg up or you know, clipping your toenails or whatever, you bring your leg up and you know, you don't just bend forward because there's something in your way that's going to get smushed and so you'll go in like this and kind of do like a little shimmy to get that out of the way and I've caught myself doing that a couple of times and I've just, you know, and other compensations um, that I've just sort of focused on changing but it's, it's interesting to me and so I figured I'd mention it. Um, but in a couple of cases it's actually caused my dysphoria to trigger, which is really interesting. I thought, I'm going to get my breasts removed, I'm going to have a male chest, I will no longer have top dysphoria. And that's not how it happened. Um, and dysphoria is weird, you don't feel good when it hits you, but um, I figured it was worth mentioning so other people might be ready for it, whereas I wasn't. Um, and what happened is, you know, I've always had something pressing on my chest, I've always had something containing my breasts. Um, and not just wearing a t-shirt. You know, if I was just wearing a t-shirt, it means I was going to bed 
And in that case, I would put something else on over it. You know, I was really trying to hide my chest from myself and from others. And so now that that's all gone, it's, um, it's, it's triggered my dysphoria a couple times and it's bizarre because those parts are gone, you know, dysphoria shouldn't be happening. Um, so in one case, you know, I was sitting, when I first went into wearing the compression garment uh, at week three, instead of wearing a medical binder or any bandaging, I'm just wearing this compression garment. The very first day that I wore it, you know, I put it on and I put a t-shirt on over it because I don't want to walk around in a rash guard all day, it's just weird for me. Um, but then in the evening I took the outer shirt off and I was just sitting around my house watching a movie and um, my dysphoria went off, you know, because my body thought, hey man, you're just sitting in a t-shirt. You have to hide your chest. Nothing's containing your chest. You don't have a binder on. You don't have a, a hoodie on. Nothing's hiding you. And, you know, it was just a really weird thing. You know, I got through it. It wasn't like a major dysphoric episode or anything like that. But I just thought it was really interesting. And it's happened a couple other times where I'm out and moving around and I'll feel my t-shirt move and, and you think, oh God, you know, you forgot to put your binder on. And you kind of have to just remind yourself, like, you don't need that anymore. You know, you've moved on and this is your body now, um, you know, and then I'm constantly tugging on my shirt just like I used to do to kind of, you know, have it laid normally against my chest, a uh, little weird habit that I've now noticed I do, I never realized I did it before, um, and it's, to me it's a fascinating thing, and, and I wasn't ready for it, so, you know, um, I just wanted to share it. Um, other people have responded to that as I've shared it in support groups and said the same thing happens to them, and that years later it'll happen. Uh, out of the blue. So, we'll see, you know. And, uh, yeah, that's it. My, my, uh, my updates, uh, are kind of boring at this point. There's not a lot to tell you about, so, um, I also want to talk to you in the future about, uh, the experience of going off of testosterone for a couple of weeks, um, because my surgeon asked me to, and also, um, you know, the emotional impact of having this surgery finally. Uh, so I'll have a couple more updates for you in the next couple weeks where I talk about that. And again, you know, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you next time.